Okay, so we have a DV4 laptop here, and um, our user says that it has an uh, issue with a blinking light in the corner. So what we're going to do is uh, plug it in, like we always do. Uh, we see a light in the jack, so we know that it's uh, powered on. We're going to push the power button. Um, something to keep in mind with these is the fact that... Um, when it's powering up, you don't necessarily have to have the CMOS battery or the fan attached. Um, we're just confirming whether it works or not. And we see that the light is blinking in the corner uh, like it is. So we know that uh, this issue with this is related to either one of three things. And this is something to remember with these boards. Um, you'll have either a chipset failure, a CPU failure, or a memory failure. So what happens is the blinking light is just a random uh, issue. It's a generic random issue. It says, okay, there's something wrong with the motherboard. This was called a generic motherboard failure. So you don't know which one of the three it is so you've got either bad memory you've got uh, a bad CPU or you've got a bad chipset now with that being said you can check the memory and see um, with this it appears to be uh, let's see what it says PC2, so it's DDR2. First thing we know about DDR2 is that it has shorts within the system. Uh, those sticks of memory have memory shorts, and what happens is it fails due to the chipset of the memory, the same as the chipset on the motherboard. So, what you'll see with this is PC2, especially 2 gigs or one gig sticks which these appear both to be two gig sticks happen to fail at a higher rate and with that being said you have issues where um, it'll give you that generic uh, generic motherboard failure so first thing you do is uh, you're going to need to test the memory and make certain that it's not bad. Second you'll need to test is the CPU. We notice that this CPU appears to be a Turion due to the green. Whether it's a Turion 64 or a X64 or X264, uh, still the same remains that these CPUs fail and give you the same uh, pulsing issue with the light as if uh, the motherboard chipset was bad. These are simple checks and what we'll do is, and what we always do, is take um, either a known gig, two gig stick, and test the memory first, or we'll take a 512. The issue with 512 sticks is that they do not fail um, the same as one gig and two gig sticks, so they're more reliable. 256 megabyte sticks do fail at the same rate as two gig sticks, so they'll either overheat or short the same as the two gig sticks, but half a gig sticks do not. And that's our experience with what we're doing. So what we're going to do is find a stick, plug it in, and test it and see where that goes. Now what we've done in the course of our testing here is we hooked everything back up and put a half a gig stick in there and we're going to turn it on and see what we find. And as part of this, this is just a simple uh, test to make sure that you're not going through the whole entire reball or reflowing process or uh, diagnostic phase just to find out that it was a stick of memory that was bad. So we see this uh, light on here telling us that it's back to what it was. 
So we're going to turn our system off and then hook it back up and try a different CPU and see where that goes. Okay, so we've got a, another CPU placed in here. And what we're going to do is uh, turn this on and see what happens. And it looks like... We have power. We'll just continue to check and see what happens. So we have the light again. Uh, with that being said, the issue that we're having is most likely uh, GPU related or chipset related. So what we're going to do is take this apart and go through the uh, reflowing process for this system. And what we're going to do is reflow that chipset and see that um, we can't get it to start. We also have another chipset right here that also needs to be addressed and reflowed. But what we'll do is uh, start everything up to do the uh, process and then go from there. And so now we're going to take everything out and go from there. Okay, so we have our machine turned on, heating up. Uh, but as you can notice, this was the top side where the plastic was, and we have another chipset there. So this will be a system that we need to uh, reflow also, along with this one. So what we're going to do is, and what I do on a regular basis is, I heat up the one. Then I let it cool down flip it over and heat up the other. You have to heat up one and the other to uh, achieve a proper reflow. So, as with everything, we'll take this and uh, put it on the brackets here and start to heat it up. And then after it gets to the correct temperature, um, we have plenty of videos to go through uh, all that stuff. So, um, it's another DV4 video right off hand I can think of. But nonetheless, you heat it up, get everything going to where it needs to go, and then uh, put the light to it, and then take it off. Place it down here, let it cool off, then flip it over and heat it up again and do the other side. Um, that's our common policy and that's what we do. So we're going to get started with this and then... Uh, go from there. Alright, it's proper and important, very important, to get this preheated correctly. So, you have to let it sit on the preheater and heat up. And that's to clean off any residue that you may have been using to actually polish the chip or clean the board. What we do is we run our stuff through ultrasonic, so you have to make certain to uh, preheated so everything dries out and it's actually making good contact with the uh, reflow process. So what we're going to do is uh, let this preheat and then we're going to actually flick the switch and start to uh, solder the board and then go from there. Okay so now we're going to let our board cool down and after it's cooled down then we'll go to testing it. So this is going to take maybe 30, 45 minutes, and then we'll go from there and see whether it works or not. Okay, so we have our uh, board set up, and what we see here is uh, the lights back on it. And what we've done is cleaned everything and reapplied uh, compound, which is uh, it's very important with the uh, work that you do and we put the original memory back in it just so we can double test that and um, so what we're going to do is push the power button and we get the lights so now we're going to go to the screen and see if we actually get it to initialize um, hopefully what we'll do is we have a green light we have the HP flash screen and we have a uh, CMOS battery check some error. So we don't have the flashing lights on there and we know that it works. So 
Um, what we're going to do is turn this off and go and find us a fan and hook it up in a test rig, run it for two hours to allow the burn in process to happen, uh, to push all that air and seal the the voids out of the actual thermal compound so that it actually uh, seals it and does what it's supposed to do. And then we're going to uh, box everything up and say it works. But for right now, what we're going to do is um, call it finished. We know that everything's good on it. We know that the memory actually checked out because we didn't have any issues with that. We know that the processor's good because it, it turned on. And we know that the chipsets are fine on it also. And we'll replace the uh, plastic shielding back onto it like it was supposed to be. And then uh, test it out, run it as a rig, and uh, hopefully everything will check out on it and it goes from there. But we're calling this one complete and done.